All right, so here are the first of about 35 pieces of conduit I'm going to have to cut and bend. Um, that's 10 pieces of conduit pipe sitting right there. Each one was $3.37 a piece, so about $40 worth of uh, pipe. And that is 10 foot long, 3 quarter inch EMT conduit pipe. And we're going to cut them into uh, two different lengths. And I got the lengths based upon uh, the dome calculator at Desert Domes. Now, all of the process of me making this dome, it's not original, the actual structure. I got the idea from Desert Domes, and I'll put a link to them, you know, in the description, you know, and, and on the on the TN Gun website. But, uh, so, there's different types of... Uh, domes 1v 2v 3v 4v 5v 6v and that that means how many different triangles right um, the more v's the more spherical you you make it and the more um, structurally sound it's going to be if you make a dome over say um, you know 14 feet or so in diameter you really need to start thinking about you know using different um, different dome, you know, instead of the 2V, maybe a 3V or 4V, right? If you're going to make a big 20-foot dome, then you, you definitely need to get, uh, to get more Vs. But I chose an 8-foot uh, radius, so 16 uh, feet in diameter dome, a 2V dome, because with a 10-foot conduit pipe, with the 2V dome, I only have to have two different lengths of pipe, and one is... Um, 5.3 feet and the other is 5.7 feet. Now, how do you get to 0 0.7? Well, you can do all sorts of math, turning, uh, you know, 12 inches into a feet you can divide out, or you can do what I did and go down to the store and get an engineer, uh, an engineer tape. And an engineer tape on the bottom, it's half inch, you know, three sixteenths, you know, feet and inches. But on the top, and I don't know if you can see that, but it's in tenths and one hundredths. So it's still one foot, but this is divided in one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, half, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, and then a foot. So I can go, you know, 5.3, 4.7, you know, a lot easier using an engineer tape. So I've got the engineer tape. I've got a little sharpie to mark my conduit. And then now all I have to do is uh, use my pipe cutter because I didn't want to use a hacksaw. Use my pipe cutter and cut these out. And we're going to cut them and then we're going to, to smash them. And I'll show you how that works too. Doing this with the pipe cutter is pretty easy because see there's my mark and I just loosen it up, slide it on there, tighten my conduit cutter down and I just go around and every time I go around I'll tighten it about a quarter turn on the knob and that pushes that blade deeper in the metal as it scores it. on the other and now I'm marking them okay you when you smush these ends flat you want to do it about three quarter inches from the end and you want to make sure that there's there's a weld line and you don't want to smash directly on the weld line and you don't want the weld line on the uh, on the end when you smash it because either one weakens it so you want the weld line to be at 45 degrees from where you're smashing and where it's flat okay now you can't always tell like that looks like the weld line there's a little line down here but you can't always tell and I found it's a lot easier to rotate the thing around because you can see the weld line inside very easily and so what I'm doing is I'm just marking and I'm just running a sharpie down 
to give me a point of reference and I've done that on both ends because you want to make sure and I'm going to make a jig to do it but you want to make sure that if you smash this end flat here you want to smash it the same way on the other end because if you get the uh, the, the smashed ends cattywampus it, it won't line up okay the next thing I'm doing is I'm just marking three quarter inch so I know how far to stick in my uh, arbor plate to smush it, okay? And I've done that with um, my, my five foot poles, right? And I'm gonna smash them. Now the first one that you smash on each, you know, the first end of each pole really doesn't matter, but you need a jig to do the other end and we're gonna show you that a little later, okay? All right, I'm using a 12 ton press. Uh, you could use a vise, you can use a hammer, you can use a smaller press, you can use an arbor press, but I have read a hammer's tyrant, you'll mess up your, your vise or your anything smaller than, than about a 12 ton press uh, doing this after you're doing 30 or so of them. Alright, so I've got this arbor plate and it's going to make it round. It's going to make it round instead of flat because that's going to make it stronger. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this up, I'm going to put my tick mark all the way up in the jaws, and I'm going to turn my uh, weld line till it's at 45 degrees, okay? Line up my uh, arbor press, tighten my, uh, my uh, jack down, and then I'm just going to hold it as I slowly put pressure on it. Now, I know you, I probably shouldn't put my fingers between the arbor press plates there, you know, uh, but... Uh, uh, since it's a hand crank and not some sort of hydraulic powered thing, you know, if I got my finger stuck, I'd probably quit uh, uh, jacking, right? I don't want to jack my finger off, right? So, once that's done, all right, loosen it up. take it out okay didn't take me very long to do the first 10 of the uh, five foot ones now I'm just gonna do the four foot ones 